fight commentary breakdowns. This is Jerry and Rob. Whoa. Rob is eating some dinner, Yo. but this is the perfect time to watch some Tian Shen Pai Kung Fu. We featured these guys before, and Rashim and a bunch of other um, viewers decided to send us more. The, the Tian Shen Pai people got back to us basically. So Rashim is the viewer on the left. Um, wow, he's two on one ing, Rob. This is pretty cool. Whoa! A little axe kick. <laughs> Dude, I like that fake. It looked like he was trying yeah. to kick the guy on the right, but he kicked the guy on the left. Wow. Oh, 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 oh! He got, oh, 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 oh! Yeah, that's kind of how I would expect it to go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome that they're testing this like two on. Oh, he tried to do a interesting kick, but kidney. yeah. Kidney oh. or liver shot. Yep. Liver heel shot. Also, guys, this is light sparring, but it's good, right? Um, there's a rule in Tian Shan Pai Kung Fu, like oh, oh, pretty good. You only go as much as you agreed on. So, like, there's no ego. No one's trying to hurt the other. They're really just trying to yeah. understand kind of dynamics. And this is where it would be over. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but this is pretty cool. I think um, uh, for viewers who know anything about uh, multiple pr attacker situations, you have to keep them lined up. So you get one, you have to use one to block the other. Ooh, he gets armbarred while he's getting ground and pounded. Yeah, that's totally right. Wow. You gotta keep one in yeah. between you and the other. So I think what Rashim did was he really you this requires a lot of cardio. You need to run around them. You can't let them get to you like this. Mm -hmm. You need to run around immediately. Mm -hmm. So but it, it's good that he's like realizing this. Like yeah. you know, it's a lot he, easier said than done. Yep, exactly. Exactly. As I, as I sit here eating my dinner. <laughs> uh, here's the thing though, two on one attacks. A lot of times, right, it's not like the two of them will attack you at the same time. It's a lot of times like one guy is more aggressive than the other. Mm -hmm. So like this does simulate how you don't have to stress out completely about always lining them. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes one guy might take a break, one person might be scared, and that's your like cue to attack the guy that's being more aggressive. But you know, once you get here, it's really hard. I think what we're learning here is the moment this failed, Rashim needed to kind of move mm -hmm. this way and just like blind them because mm -hmm. this is when it's like he does his first strike now they're going to counter mm -hmm. and this is when he has to like line them mm -hmm. right so i think that's where like rashim shouldn't have stayed in the pocket there there's a whole dvd on basically how to use a clinch with one to knock down the other that's right um fight smart travis does that i remember that video very good video rashim thank you for sending us this so now we have some more sparring i think this is viewer rashim again and um very low hands yeah and sometimes in their sparring they say no head kicks mm. so i don't think this is though i i see them kicking pretty high again guys you, you just have to spar right that's the key the regime's being very light on his feet which is pretty cool or very taekwondo-esque yeah yeah what what are they training here um so this is very likely kung fu versus taekwondo ah. and i can um uh um, I can check to make sure I said it correctly. Definitely looks like that. Yeah. Although, the black gi has a little bit of a karate-esque type. Mm. It is kung fu-esque in the bouncing. Yeah. But also, the way the way he's positioned is almost very um, uh, karate. Yeah, yeah. So, um... I like that high hand to distract. Yeah, to That's distract, really exactly. Coach Paris is really good with his hands to distract. Mm -hmm. Tian Shan Pai Kung Fu is in the Maryland area. Um, it's part of the Dennis Brown lineage. I'm actually familiar with the Dennis Brown lineage. Um, my Kung Fu school used to perform with them too. So I remember Dennis Brown. Um, Speaking of Paris, how's your face? <laughs> <laughs> it was good. <laughs> good, good. I know. Paris kicked the, if you guys follow Fight Commentaries Instagram, Paris kicked the pads into my face pretty hard. <laughs> and he was he was going very light, too. Like, I, <laughs> I cannot imagine if he kicked someone really hard anywhere, that person would go down immediately. If he actually connected shin to skull, oh. he, he'd crack skulls. Yeah, he cracks skulls, absolutely. Like, thinking about this type of sparring, it makes you wonder if they added grappling, right? How immediately their stances would change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like this kind of um, cross type of, um, just... just <laughs> Different styles, kind of testing your thing. Mm -hmm. Like even that right there, the Taekwondo guy kind of like turned his back when he missed the kick, right? Mm -hmm. You just give your back when you're sta standing too side, mm -hmm. sideways. So. I like how they're on the balls of their feet. Yeah, in yeah. In terms of uh, being being light and being uh, agile. Yeah, exactly. But like you said, there's you know they're not worried at all about the single leg. Yeah, yeah, their exactly. Legs are so far out. Yeah, yeah. Woo, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Dude, Rashid, uh, that was pretty cool. He ducked it and it's like going mm -hmm. and punch. 
What's crazy about this is that it kind of looks like play fighting yeah. until someone just accidentally gets, gets KO'd. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. And then you realize like just how easily somebody can get knocked out. Yeah. It's kind of like WTF Taekwondo, right? Even though they're like continuous kind of point sparring type of matches. Mm-hmm. Dude, chaos happen all the time in WTF. All the time. Yeah. And like it's point sparring until that one tornado kick or something just boom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like when a heel connects with the chin. It's yeah. Just like nights out. Exactly. Nights out. All right, so here's another one. Um, the guy he's sparring, the guy in the tank top, mm-hmm. was in the first video. So this mm. is another spar session with that. The guy in the tank top is a Muay Thai guy. Mm. So this is like kind of Kung Fu versus Muay Thai. I love the Kung Fu guy. This might be Rashim. I don't know if it is. He's kind of attacking the legs with a sidekick. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you see that a lot in Sanda. Mm-hmm. So the Muay Thai guy is kind of adapting, too. He's trying to attack the leg, too. Mm-hmm. woo hoo 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 He's got, got good fluidity. Yeah. I like that. I like that check. Here. Yep. A little bit of a uh, Roy Jones Jr. situation going on mm. there in the black shirt. Yeah, the um, the black shirt might be Ra- uh, Raheem, might be someone else, but it's very interesting that he switches between kind of the mm-hmm. right leg forward and the left leg forward. I noticed that. Mm-hmm. Whereas the Muay Thai guy is definitely orthodox, right? He's not like mm-hmm. switching his stances. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because... um. Um, the guy who's southpaw right now, mm-hmm. I wonder if why he doesn't step more to the outside of his opponent, his opponent's left leg, right? You step to the outside. Yeah, yeah, I wonder yeah. if he d- doesn't do that. Like, And he's not loaded up at all. Yeah. That's, that's what's interesting is that he's kind of, I, I feel like there's an emphasis on his his legs mm-hmm. because his hands are not loaded up to yeah, strike. Yeah, I see. Makes his sense. His hands are just sort of there as counterbalances to his legs. Yeah, yeah. Woo! Yeah, see, yeah. like he was—he was already thinking about his legs. Yeah, yeah. And you can tell because his hands weren't weren't even in a position to throw. Yeah, he's kind of doing it now. Um, the uh, the kung fu guy's kind of—he's moving his right foot to the outside of the opponent's left foot. You see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. At least he's bringing his left hand up to mm-hmm. guard his yeah. high kicks. There it is. That's nice. I like that. Mm-hmm. See, the, the Muay Thai guy is knowing. He's like, I can't let his right foot get to the outside of my left foot. Mm-hmm. He's like, he, now he's like paying a, attention. He's aware of it. I, I don't know if he's aware. It's he, he just, like, he just like natural for him. But no, no, he's aware. He's aware sure. of it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. You can tell. Yeah. He's kind of he's kind of baiting him a little bit. Uh-huh. He's, got, he's got good head movement. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, nice. He's, he's a pretty good gauge of range. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> He's going to get timed here if he keeps doing that yeah. too much. Yeah. Yeah. See? Yeah. Like, you, you, you don't want to go, you don't want to keep doing the same motion over and over and over yeah. again. If he used that energy to, to create angles, you'd mm-hmm. be in a much better place. There you go. Yeah. There like that. Go. Like that. Exactly. Yeah, I wouldn't cross my leg. Yeah. Like that, exactly. Yeah. You know, the more that kind of side to side movement instead yeah. of crossing the leg. See how many things opened up when he angled off? Yeah. 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 So, uh, black shirt, it has. You can tell he's much more confident in his leg kick, yeah. in his kick, excuse me, than his hands. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure he's got okay hands, but mm-hmm. you can tell that like it, it, when he threw that jab, it wasn't, it wasn't crispy. Yeah, you know yeah what I mean? exactly. It, like he, yeah, like his hands are not confident. Yeah. He's much more confident in his legs. And I think most kung fu guys are like this. Mm-hmm. Most kung fu guys, just because you know, there's something that's very punching, which, good for punching, which is boxing, right? Mm-hmm. If you combine boxing with kung fu, you basically get stand up. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, that's why I want to train boxing because I know I don't know anything about my hands, so I had to mm-hmm. work on something I know was a weakness. Mm-hmm. Like my kicks. You know, just from Kung Fu, I have the flexibility still. Mm-hmm. But, like, even growing up when I was fighting all these people, like, in the playground, you know, whatever, I, I would never really punch. Oof, I would always oof. just kick. Ooh. His reverse kick is nasty. Yeah. He's got a really good spin kick. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, <laughs> he paid for it. <laughs> yeah. But, but, um... That definitely deserves a highlight right there. If I if I was to give them, uh, you know, credit, it would be uh, that Black Shirt has a, has a very decent spin kick. Yeah. And that both of them have... V- Fairly good reaction speed yeah. when it comes to fainting. Yeah, exactly. I like that. I like the. I like his little movement. Yeah. I, I wish I could see more of going outward. Yeah. Because he can. He, he. You can tell he can close the distance going towards his opponent. Yeah. But there we go. Just a little bit. He he moved out of the range just a yeah. little bit to set up that. You can tell he's much more comfortable with with spin kicks. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. He must have trained that a lot. Definitely. 
And I think Rob makes a good point, right? You got to learn to fight as you're going backwards or mm-hmm. retreating, basically, mm-hmm. a, as you're um, going forward, too. So mm-hmm. you have to learn to fight forward and backwards. And, of course, angling is the most important. But, mm-hmm. like, when you're being pressured and you have to fight backwards, you have to learn how to do basics, like basic kicks, basic punches going yeah. backwards. I mean, this guy's so comfortable with his spin kicks. I would like to see him implement some spinning back fists mm. because they're right there. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, and, exactly. And the, and the Muay Thai guy's hands are low yeah. because, honestly, they might not be throwing. They might have said, like, let's not throw to the face. Yeah, yeah. Because th- there are just so few, uh, like, headshots. Yeah, yeah. There's, like, little taps, little jabs here to sort of distract. But yeah. So it's possible that they are much more versatile with their hands. It's just that they agreed to not throw. Mm-hmm. So here we have another one. And, ooh, I like this one. This one looks like a kung fu versus kung fu type of fight. I love these. <laughs> too stagnant for me. I don't. I, mm. I could not do that. Like, it's too... Um, I need to be on the balls yeah. of my feet. Yeah, you'd be their bouncing Their feet are very around. flat. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily be bouncing, mm-hmm. but I but I would I need to be on the balls of my feet so that I can move in and out of range. Mm, I see. This is very um, very stagnant. Mm, yeah. And I'm you know I guess that's kung fu ish, right? Yeah, I I definitely certain styles of kung fu very like this. I mean, I know that a lot of times in, in boxing, there are some people that sit on their punches. Mm-hmm. They, they have relatively flat feet. And mm-hmm. They want to generate some power. But all in all, you really limit your mobility. Yeah. Yeah, he's just trying to pressure him a little bit just to sort of test the waters. Yeah. <clears throat> but I think he's trying to get in range for his spin kick. Yeah. Like, let's see if he throws a spin kick yeah. here to the ribs. Oh, there's a little hook. Yeah. A midsection crescent kick. Yep. It's interesting how he, um, the guy with the turquoise shirt shorts, almost has like a modified Philly shell before yeah. kicking. Yeah, he's definitely <laughs> he's definitely setting everything up for kicks. Yeah, but he's like got one hand to parry, yeah. and then he's got the other hand there on his Co- side covering his jewels. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean that really is not gonna work in a in a legit legit fight because yeah, you'll exactly. get you'll get blasted. Yeah. <clears throat> but you know he's doing a good job of of uh, I mean right there your your hamstring would get yeah, lit yeah. Up, <laughs> absolutely lit up. just kicked over and over. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why that why he's not lighting it up. Mm-hmm. It could be this is just one of those like they're practicing hitting to the body, maybe potentially. I mean, wow, that guy's got some flexibility. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I feel like, um, I feel like a turquoise guy has, uh, maybe a little bit more experience, mm. and he's, but he, but man, I mean, this guy's got flexibility and he's got, he's got uh, technique. I mean, mm-hmm. like some of that stuff is crispy. Yeah. It's just, I don't understand why, um, why the lack of attacking the, the lead kick? Oh, oh there like it is. There. Lead yeah, leg, yeah. right there. Lead leg. Finally. Yeah. You know what I mean? It took a while because yeah. that lead leg is out there. Yeah, exactly. You know, if, if this was a Muay Thai versus uh, turquoise shorts, mm-hmm. he would not be yeah. walking to Yeah, that. he would be eating a lot of... It would be like Chu Xiaodong versus Tian Yin, where Tian just kept chopping at the legs with the kicks. Mm-hmm. I noticed... Um, the, oh, interesting. Uh, the guy with the white... Shin pads is also switching between left leg forward and right leg forward, which yeah. is really cool. He's obviously got some either some gymnastics background or he's been doing this for a yeah. while because yeah. he's got incredible control over his flexibility. Yeah, exactly. I'm also wondering, um, you know, the guy in there. You go. The the guy mm-hmm. with white shin pads is. Is hitting the lead leg of Turquoise Sky more, but Turquoise has I'm wondering if why he's not hitting more the the legs of our white shin pad guy. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe you know because like you said he's the more experienced guy. He's just like okay, I'm gonna hold back and let mm-hmm. this guy attack. I'm just gonna counter. Mm-hmm. I mean, both these guys are athletic, but it's like it's contained. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. Like they're just they're waiting to pop off. Yeah, I mean. Uh, like Raheem told me, it's they, they try to be respectful and controlled with their sparring. Mm-hmm. So this is a good example of that. Just practicing a certain thing. Mm-hmm. 
I can appreciate that. Yeah. But I can also, I, I would just say that, like, um, you know, this is going to work against maybe somebody who's not trained. Yeah. But yeah. you go up against somebody who's trained in MMA, this is not going to work. Yeah, exactly. You're going you're gonna to get shot in on. Yeah. Or hip tossed or whatever. Yeah. The, um, the white shin pad, with that hand, that right hand there, mm-hmm. I wish he would use it more to jab or use mm-hmm. it to kind of distract more. He's kind of just putting it up there. Mm-hmm. Like, use a jab at least. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, it almost feels like... It, his his hand there is just serving no purpose. Well, I think what it is is he's he understands that uh, turquoise shorts can deliver a high kick. Ah, uh, so it's there to check it. It's just it's just there for the kick. I but, see. But the thing is, is like the way it's positioned, it goes right into your face. Yeah, exactly. So you need to you need to create the angle in order for it to glance off. Because mm. if you just hold it up there like that, one your sh- your forearm is going to get tired. Well, yeah, exhausted. It's going to get tired, but it's also going to get lit up yeah. in terms of like bruised Getting, yeah. yeah you can actually break your arm trying to check you know high kicks definitely I think Kung Lee broke Frank Shamrock's arm yeah when Frank tried to check a kick I believe yeah, when you try to absorb a, a, a force of a kick you, you know it, it always does damage yeah, yeah it's just a matter of how much damage yeah, yeah totally and if you can create a glancing um, force then you're far better off yeah exactly so here we have one Again, it's the same turquoise guy now. He's wearing blue shorts. He's going against a guy with um, red um, pants. Gee, yeah, pants. red gi pants. <laughs> and notice one has MMA gloves and blue has uh, the boxing gloves. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting too. Wow. He's uh, red pants doing a good job of, of that lead leg sort of creating. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. That was a nice little. That's uh, why I don't turn your back on your opponent. Yeah, you know, a little taekwondo yeah. kick. Um, the guy with the red gi pants, I believe, was the guy that I featured the first time I looked at mm. Tan Shampai Kung Fu. So he might be one of the lead instructors. Mm, I was going to say, yeah, he's got, he's got good, um, not only good flexibility with that lead, lead leg, but mm. also, like, he does a good job of distance management with yeah. it. And yeah, he's exactly. almost like an antenna. Yeah. And he does a good job of keeping his eyes always on Always the on the opponent, yeah. Yeah, he doesn't turn away, which is good. Yeah. It's really tempting. Yeah, course. especially with kicks, right? Oh, Ooh. nice little, uh, nice little axe, axe kick there. Kick, yeah. <laughs> fancy. You yep. fancy. Yep. Um, green shirt can't get uh, lazy. I mean, mm-hmm. like I know he's, I know he's, he's got, like you can't, yeah, you, you can't he, practice yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Can't keep turning your back. He's like done that, that twice already, yeah. and the first time he paid for it, the guy kicked him. I right, think. Right. Right. It's okay. I mean, I understand that these are your friends and everything, but like the the way you practice is the way that you're gonna ultimately fight. Yeah, absolutely. So you just don't build. You fight habits. how you train, yeah. exactly. So I mean, he's 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 low key. You know, he's, da- he's. I think the reason why he's so comfortable doing that is because he's dangerous with his spinning kick. Ah, uh, makes sense. And his, you know, his sort of donkey kick. Yeah. But yeah. um, you know, he. Uh, I would just, you know. What do I know? Yeah. I just wouldn't turn my back like that. And again, he turned his back. See, and, and his head coach like uh, kind of like tapped him in the head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good way to get rabbit punched. Yep, 100%. This one looks like Kung Fu vs. Grappler. The Grappler's like, okay, come, come. Uh-uh. Don't get swept, Kung Fu guy. Oh, nice. I like that shin on shin. Uh-uh. Very nice, very nice. Setting up the old leg lock here. Uh-uh. Maybe a little Baron Bolo. I see. <laughs> um, all right, good. He's got... He's got his foot on his hip, setting up. Oh, he's already setting up attacks. Mm. So when you when uh, you can see that he's got his head high up off the mat, which is very good. Mm-hmm. Right now he's in severe danger of being triangled mm. because his hand is. See how his hand was looking to take away the ankles. I see. So he's like he's give like right there his arms. Yeah, he's being yeah, on it yeah. like that. He's setting up the arm. Yep, and look at that. Yeah, it's yeah. happening. Yeah. So it, right now. All he's got to do is pass that elbow across the center line, mm-hmm. and and uh, he's already got the arm bar mm. locked in. Like he's getting a very high guard here, which is good. He's also he's also going to get swept here mm. if he takes his maybe his right or left leg and goes down on the knee and sweeps up on the other one with the butterfly guard. Oh, ours, uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. What an interesting way of trying to escape that yep. arm bar. So yeah, what he needs to do is he needs to push that elbow across the center line, mm-hmm. break the posture first, mm-hmm. break the posture first. There we go. He's setting up the Kimura right here. Mm-hmm. He's already broken the posture. It should be over at this point. Mm-hmm. Right now, he can control the shoulder, clamp it down, go for the triangle. 
Uh, he's, there you go. He's doing a good job of trying to pass that um, arm across the center line. There he goes. See how he shrimped out? Mm. When he shrimped out, now he's he's going for the attack. Mm-hmm. Oh, there oh, it is. There it is. There it is. Oh, he got it. He got it. He better tap. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, tap, tap. He needs to clamp down on the back of his head and break his posture. Ah, uh, yeah. And he needs to wrap his arm underneath the knee there and just bring him down to the ground, which I think... No, he's not doing. Uh, if he takes his right arm and wraps around right. his leg yeah. and just pulls his leg towards his face, mm-hmm. uh, the guy will have no base and mm. he'll just fall and he'll finish. The, it, he needs to bring his heel, his left heel, to the ground. Oh, mm. he might be toying with him. Yeah, I think he's toying. From what I understand, this guy's a pretty good jujitsu guy. He's just messing around with yeah. the kung fu guy. Yeah, he's doing a good job of breaking the posture. Mm-hmm. Again. Um, because his posture is semi-broken here. Mm-hmm. Wow, he's got good flexible yeah. legs. So he's trying to set up mission control here. Mm. Um, now, okay, right here, this is what's called prison guard. Prison guard. If he, well, if he was to grab it. Uh-huh. But, yeah, he just needs to bump that elbow across and he can finish with the arm triangle. Wow. Doing a good job. What you want to do is get that right his right hand uh, north of his head. Mm-hmm. And he's doing a good job here. The reason for that is because his opponent's so much bigger than him, he's going to try and push into him and smash past him. Mm-hmm. So, he, yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, he's going to sweep him. Oh, good job. He's getting underneath him. He's swimming. He's swimming. He's doing a good job of uh, taking it. Oh, and it ended. Looks like uh, I got all Kung Fu guy kind of survived, even though there were mo- multiple times when the Jiu guy could have finished him. But Kung Fu guy yeah. survived. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's so interesting. Like this is like tenth planet level flexibility. Yeah, I think yeah. I think obviously he's he's got experience with the rubber guard. Wow. Right here, what he really needs to do is uh, see how that that frame is right there in his neck. Yeah, right there. So yeah. that is a Americana key lock waiting to happen. Uh. Like if he if he was to lock that up. He could he could sweep him from here from no problem. He needs to lock up that shoulder mm. and then push that knee out, uh-huh. push the right leg out. Uh-huh. Oh, sorry, the opponent's top left leg. Uh huh. Um, but now he's going. It looks like he was going for uh, leg lock here. Anytime a limb is extended from the body, mm-hmm. it's open to attack. Yeah. Exactly. So you can see the left arm here is open to attack. The left leg here is definitely open mm. to attack. Either one of those, like as long as you are cognizant of that when you're grappling. Always be looking for the extended arm mm. or the extended leg. Or the extended leg, if yeah. If you can remove an arm or leg or head away from the center posture, you know what I mean, of the torso, mm-hmm. it's susceptible to being submitted. So this is the last one in this series on Tian Shan Pai Kung Fu. And mm. this time it's two people with long hair. One guy has way longer hair. With that hair. Yeah, exactly. Whip that hair. Use it as a distraction mechanism. Right in the eyes. Right in the eyes, exactly. There's this girl that used to sit in front of me. Would always like whip her hair into my eyes to flirt. Uh, this was this was high school. You know, high school people do that. Did it work? It worked, but I was still too shy to really talk to her. She Where hates is she me. Now? Uh, she got married. Ah, damn. Yeah, she got married like uh, four months ago, right before the lockdown. It was really fun. Whoa, that was a, a failed uh, jump, spin kick. Mm-hmm. But, Woo! Like, oh. All right, thump. he's bringing spinning fists in. Yeah. Thump. Well, Just Mo. Good. Oh, that if he keeps leading with that lead Woo. hook like that, he's going to get caught. Yep. Yep. Whoa! Look at that. Uh, I feel like these guys have a have a history because they're just playing. Yeah, they're just having fun, exactly. They know each other's kind of game, so they're like, okay, let's just add in some flair. Mm-hmm. What yeah. I like is that... Um, uh, the black pants has mm. a little bit of like a capoeira yeah. going on. Yeah. Yeah, like you said, um he this guy he did it again. The guy in the in the turned green, he turned his back again. Yeah. yeah. Definitely don't do that. Yeah. Yeah, it's because he's so comfortable with spinning kicks. Yeah. But, I but guess same, so. But at the same time it's just you're ooh, I like that. that yeah. That's nice. I mean you get caught with that heel of Schneid. Yeah. And I guess, you know, we, there's always exceptions, guys, right? Like, for example, judo guys sometimes will turn their back, too, but that's because they're comfortable throwing you. Putting your hip right yeah, in. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this guy's got, this guy knows really well how to uh, get on the inside. Mm-hmm. Even though he's tall, he gets yeah. on the inside. I like that. That was good. Yeah. That was great. I like yeah. that little elbow. Yeah, I saw that. That was nice. He said, oh, I'm sorry for throwing my elbow. <laughs> yeah. This tall, lanky guy would be a nightmare for me. Uh, 
He's pretty good at shifting levels, too. I very, noticed that. Very good, yeah. yeah. He's fast. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. He gets in and, out, in and out of range. Yeah. He uses his weight as a counterbalance. Yeah. Did you see that that little funny hammer fist yeah. thing that he yeah. just did? Yeah. That was like a jab hammer fist. Yeah. I call so, it the boom. moat. <laughs> <laughs> the moat. The boom. <laughs> Hank used to do that to me all the time. Oh, really? Uh oh. God, you killed him. Ugh. Ooh, that was an interesting kind of yeah. almost an overhand, well, but he's like. distracting him. He, he's uh, throwing his hand up high to distract. I see. <laughs> I like that. I used to do that when I would spar people. Yeah. Man. No, he's shelling up. Yep. He's shelling up. Man, his his liver is right, yeah, right there. Right there. Right there. If he was going up against a boxer, oh, that poor liver. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Would be destroyed. Yeah. And we're talking, of course, about the guy in green. Mm-hmm. But, um, see, like, for example, remember remember the previous guy who kind of put his hand out there? This guy is using his hand for not just putting it out there, mm-hmm. right? He's using it for distraction and for hitting. That's so, what I meant. It's really interesting about the tall, lanky guy uh-huh. is that um, he framed up with his left arm. Mm-hmm. So he's got these really interesting frames. Mm-hmm. He almost uses his lead arm as a shield, oh, and then he uses his, his back hand... His power hand, almost like a spear. Uh, like, like, you'll see it here in a moment. I think mm-hmm. he'll you, he'll he'll put his head behind the left arm uh-huh. as he frames up, and then he'll sort of almost like a like a Roman spear. There you like go. That, like that. Like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like a boom. Yeah. Yeah. He does. He, this comes up. His yeah. Head, his head is behind it, and then yeah. he goes like this. Yeah. And you know they do this in Muay Thai, but they but what they do is they put their they put their head or their hand on their head yeah. to create the glancing blow yeah. in order to to guard their chin. Yeah, exactly. Wow. I want to thank Tian Shan Pai Kung Fu. Tian Shan Pai Kung Fu, thank you so much for reaching out to us after you guys got on the first time. I might have called you Rahim. I'm so sorry, Rashim. I'm really sorry if I called you Rahim earlier. So Rashim, thank you so much for sending us these videos. Any member of Tian Shan Pai sent us any time, man. Seriously. This is Jerry and Rob. Peace. Fight commentary breakdowns. And guys, man, um, Rob, are you at 2,000 subscribers yet? You're almost there, right? Almost there. Almost there. Guys, you guys should subscribe to Rob's what? channel, man. What? He's almost at 2,000 subscribers, man. He's beating Silala. Internet famous. I know. What's Silala, up? man, where you been? <laughs> so, yeah. So, guys, you guys should subscribe to Rob's channel. If we get my channel to 10,000 subs, I will fight you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you guys want to spar Rob, um, get him to 10,000 subscribers. I'm just kidding. <laughs> or um, if you guys get Rob to 10,000 subscribers, maybe he'll spar, light spar, Paris. Coach no, Paris. No, <laughs> Rob's no, like, no. I do not want any of Paris. <laughs> I'll, I'll roll with Paris. But, but no, not, no striking I with him. I am not taking any <laughs> limbs from Paris. <laughs> Dude will knock me into oh, next week. Yeah, I guess if you spar Paris, you have to do Kyukushin rules. No punches to the head, and then I guess you would you would do um, Kyukushin rules plus no kicks to the head. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that would be a that would be a. a he's so tall. He's yeah. So, he's so lanky, and yeah. he's actually got tremendous power. Yeah, yeah. Which is rare in yeah. a in a lanky person. I mean, yeah. it's not rare. Excuse me. It's not rare to have power in a lanky person, but to have a combination of speed, power. And technique is pretty rare. Yeah, exactly. But that's why he's Coach Paris, man. That's why I call him Coach Paris because he's got all these black belts, six how's, of them. How's his subs doing? Um, I don't know. He's just not doing anything on that channel. All Come right. on, Coach Paris. All right, we're linking Paris's channel yeah. below. Yeah. Sub to Paris. Sub to Paris and tell him make videos. Jiu Jitsu black belt. He's got like ten black belts. Yeah, exactly. In various arts. Yeah, yeah. So. Get on the get on Paris's channel and, and share some share some love. Exactly. All right, guys. Fight commentary breakdown.